from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we cover atmosphere volume. This shader or atmospheric effect allows you to simulate light scattered by atmosphere. You can use this effect with spotlight, point light and different area lights like quad cylinder. Let's take a look at the scene that we have. This is the current render that we are getting and the illumination in this scene coming from the uh, sky dome light here that has a physical sky attached to if I go to my material editor this is the physical sky that we have it attached to our sky and the intensity is set to 0.25 and 1 and the overall intensity here in the physical sky is set to 0.5 as well and we have these spotlights as you can see these three spotlights this one this one and the one on the back side of the house now also the physical camera as you can see have an exposure of six here so in order to actually add atmosphere volume to your scene you need to go to your render setting And in the under Arnold render in the environment background and atmosphere section you have this atmosphere section and here you can define a scene atmosphere so I'm going to click on this no mat and under the Arnold material in the atmosphere section you have this atmosphere volume material so let's assign it to our scene atmosphere as you can see from the active shade by assigning an atmosphere volume to our scene atmosphere we haven't changed anything because we really need to define and adjust the atmosphere volume material that we have assigned to our scene atmosphere so I'm going to press M to open up my material editor or use this icon here and drag and drop this atmosphere volume to my material editor and press OK let me double click on it to select it now in order for the atmosphere volume to work you need to have a density value bigger than zero so let's set the density in this case to something like 0.1 and run the active shade now immediately as you can see we have atmospheric effect in the scene obviously 0.1 is way too high for the scene so let me try 0.05 or in this case 0 0.02 now this should be enough as you can see we have this beautiful atmospheric effect and we can control how it looks using the atmosphere volume material obviously the the first parameter was the density and using density you can control the atmospheric volume overall density and using the density color obviously you can control the overall color for the atmospheric effect so if I go to another color here and press OK and run the active shade again now as you can see we have this color in our atmosphere volume effect there you go I'm gonna set this to white again next we have this attenuation parameters attenuation and attenuation color as I increase the attenuation parameter to let's say something like uh, 0.3 and run the active shade again when we increase this volume the light will only travel through the volume for a short distance and as I decrease it the light travels longer so if I again try let's say uh, 0.1 in this case and run the active shade you can see as we decrease it the light can travel further and if I go to zero we have basically no attenuation in this case let's try something like 0.05 and run the active shade again 
and we have the attenuation color and the attenuation value will basically be multiplied by the attenuation color. So if I set the attenuation color to uh, something like uh, pure blue here, we are basically attenuating the blue color. And if I go to something like a red color, we are attenuating the red color. Let's run the active sheet again. Okay. In this case, let me set the attenuation color to white again. And the attenuation value to zero. And run the active sheet. Next, we have this eccentricity uh, parameter or an isotropy. As I use positive values, let's say something like 0.5 and run the active shade again, you can see that more rays will be scattered in the direction that the light is facing. And as I use a negative value, let's say like negative 0.5 and run the active shade again, now in this case, more rays will be scattered in the opposite direction. And if set to zero, you can see the light will be scattered evenly in all directions. And finally, you have this effect camera, effect diffuse and effect specular. So if you want uh, to control how much contribution the effect will have to the final uh, render, you can use the effect camera. So if I use something like 0.5, we are gonna get half of the effect in the camera visible basically. And the next value is effect diffuse. By default, the atmosphere volume won't affect the indirect diffuse rays. And if I set this to one, let me just create a copy from this and set the diffuse effect diffuse value to one and run the active shade again. Now, as you can see from this render, now the atmosphere volume actually affect the indirect diffuse rays and as you can see how these areas are a bit brighter in this render with the uh, diffuse effect if you set to one and when we do that we also introduce some fireflies that uh, we need to increase our uh, diffuse samples to get rid of them for now set the effect diffuse to be one and we have effect specular so if we want to see our atmosphere volume effect in specular reflections or not now we can do a few interesting thing. In this case, uh, for now, let's set the effect diffuse to zero and let me create a quick noise node, assign it to the uh, density color or RGB density. Now, if I run the active shade, we can start adjusting our noise map. Maybe let's use scale of 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and see if it's going to change anything. Now, as you can see, we have some noise. Probably let me use something like 0.05 and set the octaves maybe to something like two or three and the amplitude to something like five and see what we are gonna get. So as you can see now we are controlling the overall density with a noise map and we are creating this beautiful mysterious shot. You just need to add some fog to the overall effect and you have got yourself a creepy shot. But uh, as you can see it's a very powerful shader and you can do a lot with it. Okay. In this case, I'm just going to disconnect it for now. Also, this samples while you actually forgot to discuss, this is basically the quality of your atmosphere volume effect. If you saw some noise in the atmosphere volume effect, you can go ahead and actually increase the samples while you to get a cleaner uh, volumetric effect. Now for the final render, what I'm going to do is to go to my render setting, increase the diffuse samples probably to something like four, my camera samples to something like four, I don't have any other ray types like specular or transmission in this case. And finally, 
increase the size to something like 1000 or even 1500 and disable the preview and let's render the scene and take a look at our final render after it's done and here is our final render in this lesson we discussed atmosphere volume in arnold 4 3ds max and i will see you in the next lesson to discuss the fog effect thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course comprehensive introduction to arnold 4 3ds max make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out